So let's uh, read from the Bible, and we're going to read part of the Christmas story from Luke chapter 1 and verses 26 to 38. Uh, And just listen out in these words for some of the names given to Jesus. So let's follow God's word together. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was, girls and boys? Shout it out a bit louder. Oh, thank you. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Amen. Now, girls and boys, here's a question for you. I want you to really think, listen carefully, because... I want to know something that people have not to eat for their Christmas dinner. So I'm not thinking of food. I'm not thinking of what we drink. But very often, Christmas Day, I know in our house, we have something put on the table. What do you think that might be? Crackers. That's right. Hands up if you're going to have Christmas crackers for Christmas dinner. Well, not for Christmas dinner, but along with them. Right, that's great. Well, this morning... I'm going to treat you to Ken McBride's worst ever Christmas cracker jokes. Do you want to hear some? No? Do you want to hear some? Yeah? Okay. What did the big candle say to the little candle? Are you going out tonight? Okay. I told you there were worse. What do you get if you cross an apple with a Christmas tree? What do you get if you cross an apple with a Christmas tree? A pineapple. (laughs) <laughs> what's brown and sugary and sneaks round the kitchen at the dead of night? Mince spies. <laughs> is that okay? Can I have that? What is the carol that people sing in the desert? Oh, camel, you faithful. Oh, I told you there were Ken McBride's worst Christmas cards. What's the best Christmas present that a parent can give to their children? A drum kit that's broken. (laughs) Why? Because you can't beat it. Okay, Christmas crackers. I hope you get better jokes than that out of your Christmas crackers this Christmas. But there's something else that we expect at Christmas. And under the Christmas tree, we usually put a lot of goldfish. Well, no, not really. What do you put under your Christmas tree? Presents. Now, if you're like our house, and we've got children and grandchildren coming for Christmas and loads and loads of people think, well, if eight staying with us and 13 for Christmas Day, what do you think is a good thing to have on the present around the tree? What would you have on the what? Oh, sorry? Name on it. That is so good. All the presents in our house will have names on them. And names are very, very important. And in the reading that we had and in the nativity that the children did, there were a lot of names given for Jesus. I'm told, because I haven't counted them myself, but I'm told that there are 2,200 names in the Bible that can be given to Jesus. That's incredible. And names are very important, especially in the Bible, because names tell you something about the person they represent. 
And this morning in our reading, there are three names I want just to share with you. And you girls and boys have already done a good job because you've said really most of what I'm going to say. And in Luke chapter 1 and verse 31, it says, you are to give him the name Jesus. Do you think we could read that out loud together? Would that be all right? Let's look 1, 31. You are to give him the name Jesus. And Jesus literally means God saves. And later in Luke, he's called actually Savior. And it means he is the one who rescues us from our sins, who saves us when we're drowning in our selfishness and in our greed, and he saves us. Jesus literally means Savior. And then in Luke 1, 32, there's another name given to Jesus. Can you see that on the screen? Shall we read that out loud together? You'll be called the Son of the Most High. And if you read on the verse, you discover that Luke says, the angel told Mary that this Jesus would be given the throne of his father David, King David in the Old Testament. And Jesus came, born in a stable, born not in a palace, but born in very humble circumstances. Yet he came that he might become our King and Lord of our lives, that he might be first place in our lives. And the angel said to Mary, this boy, baby that you're going to have, he'll be Jesus, the Savior, and he will be the Son of the Most High, King of Kings. And then in Luke 1, 35, we have another title for Jesus. He will be called, shout it out together, the Son of God. Fantastic. This baby Jesus, born from Mary's womb, was fully human, so they could understand what it's like to be us. He's been a boy, and he went through school, and he went through home, and he learned how to become an adult and go to work in the carpenter's workbench. He experienced everything that we experience, even coming to death itself. Uh, and he was fully human, but also, we believe, fully divine. He will be called, the angel said, the Son of God. And in a very wonderful way, someone who was both fully human and fully divine was the only person who could save us from our sins and give us the gift of eternal life. And just as the girls and boys said earlier, uh, we have, if you like, a great gift that God has given us. And it's as if it has our name on it. But wouldn't it be a tragedy? Uh, and this happens to us sometimes. Maybe somebody we thought we were going to see and we didn't see, uh, and Christmas comes and goes, and under the tree there might be one or two presents left for people we hadn't seen. Wouldn't it be awful if there was a present with your name on it under the tree and you just ignored it and went home and didn't bother about it? Well, today God says there's a present for you, his gift of Jesus as Savior and King and Lord, and your name is written on that gift, and all you have to do is, as the girls and boys said as they held up, I thought they were going to share the box of celebrations and, and stuff around with us, but they said, you've got to choose. You've got to take the gift, and until you take that gift and make it your own, Jesus won't be real to you. So I wish you a very happy Christmas. I wish you a Christmas when we can celebrate that God sent his son to be our savior, to be our king, and to be the God who saves us. Will you remember that uh, as you celebrate Christmas? Now, let's, let's pray together. And girls and boys, you have been incredible, not only for what you did, but in the way you've behaved when I've been talking, a big, long talk to you this morning. So thank you for that. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your love for us. We celebrate a lot of Christmas of things that are good, and yet we remember that the purpose of your coming was that you might die. And in your death and in your resurrection, you proved that you were indeed the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior of the world. And we thank you at this Christmas time, with lots of presents being given and received, that your gift of Jesus to us has our name on it, Help us to be those who meet your love with ours, who reach out and take your gift and make it our own. And then we'll have the greatest Christmas celebrating the greatest gift of all. And these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.